Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll continue with episode 12 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode we'll be covering while loops and we'll also make mention of do while as well. So the syntax for a while loop goes something like this. We have while and then we have an open and close parenthesis followed by an open and close curly brace and inside this area here between the two braces we will run a block of statements. So this right here can be any kind of other code that we want to execute while this condition is true. So what the while loop is looking for is if this inside condition is true, otherwise if it's false, it will break out of this portion of the code and continue on the rest of the program. Using this information, let's make our first while loop together. So we can type while and then some condition. So just to show a point, I'm going to create a Boolean. So bool, this is a value that's true or false. I'm going to call it condition and set it equal to true by default. Then I'll put my curly braces and inside of here I'll just say something in the console. So I'll see out hello world and I'll put a new line after that for every time I print it out. And then inside of here I'll put the condition. So the condition is always equal to true according to this program. And here we're checking while condition and while that condition is true we'll spit out hello world in the console. So I'll get rid of this so we can compile things. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Let's compile this and give this a shot. All right, I'll compile first and then run the program. And what we're seeing here is hello world being spammed to our screen infinitely right now. So we're actually stuck in the while loop because we said, hey, as long as this condition is true and we set our condition to of a value of true, and then we printed out hello world, we actually created an infinite loop here. Now the reason I wanted to show this is in case you do get stuck in an infinite loop at some point, in order to get out of it, you can type control and then C together and that will actually terminate the program altogether by sending it an interrupt or signal known as termination. So that's just something to keep in mind if you ever get stuck in one. But let's go to our program again and actually make it do something useful. While loops can be a great way to keep your program running until a user wants to exit out. So let's do an example of that real quick. So this time I'm going to rename this to exit here and we'll create a bool called exit. I'll initially set it to false. And then in the while loop, I'll check if exit is double equal to false. Meaning as long as the variable exit is false, keep executing whatever is inside the while loop. And let's change this to make it something more clever. We'll ask the user a question. Do you want to keep executing? Below that, I'll use sin in order to take a value from the user and I'll overwrite the variable exit. We should also tell our user what to type in. So I'm going to paste another line here and then just say zero, keep executing or one, quit executing. Let's give this a shot real quick. I'll first compile my program and then I'll run it. And here we are asked the first time, do you want to keep executing? Zero, keep executing. One, quit executing. I want to keep executing, so I'll push zero and press enter. And as you can see, every time I put zero in, it keeps executing the same exact code. Now eventually, I might want to quit out this program, so I'll type a one, press enter, and now the code exited gracefully and how awesome that we were able to create a program that could keep executing until the user actually gave some input of when they wanted to exit the program. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and create another example. We can also use relational expressions in here as well. So let's say we wanted to check a number that was given to us and we only wanted positive numbers. So let's check for a number that is greater than or equal to zero. That way it's a positive number. Otherwise we'll quit executing this piece of code. So initially let's set up a number of integer type called num and we'll set it equal to zero. That way the first time through, we're able to get into this while loop. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. I do wanna say that these while loops are another form of flow control and can execute until a condition between these parentheses becomes false. But one thing to note is if the statement is false to begin with, then the while loop will never execute. Instead, if you want to execute at least one time, you would use a different type of a while loop called a do while. And we'll talk about that briefly a little later. Well, let's keep going with this and keep asking the user for a number. 
So we'll just do sin num and I'll do an end line. And why not tell the user what we want? So please enter a whole number and I'll put an end line to make things look good. And now what I expect out of this program is the very first time since we set num equal to zero, we'll go into this while loop and we'll ask the user for a whole number. The user can type in a number and if they don't type in a number greater than zero, we'll actually exit out of our program. And I just noticed the mistake. I don't need this end line here. That's not for the sin object. I wanted it for the C out object up above. So we'll just erase that and try this by saving it where we'll first compile the program and then run it. Now it says, please enter a whole number. So if I type in one, keep two, three, four, it keeps asking me for a whole number every single time. But what if I put in a negative one? Well, all of a sudden the program exits. And that's the behavior we would expect because we said it had to be a number greater than or equal to zero. One more thing I'll show you is how to print out 100 numbers here easily. Uh, this is something sort of what we did in the for loops episode. I'll show it here as well. So if we do 100 here, so this is actually going to print out zero to 100 and then exit out. And every single time we'll just print out a number here. So We'll do that. I'll put an end line here as well. And then just put num plus plus. And that way it increments number by one every single time through this while loop. So at the beginning, num will be zero and then it will print out zero and increment it by one. Num will become one and so on and so forth as it gets to 99, which is still less than 100. And after it does get to 100, it'll break out of here. So we should expect zero through 99. Let's give this a shot as well. That's exactly what got printed out here in our console, zero through 99. Awesome. Well, now we know how to use while loops, but let's talk about the do while loop real quick. And back to my example from before, let's use a do while loop to actually make things simpler here. So a do while actually goes something like this, do and then curly braces. Inside these curly braces is you'll put the block of statements that you want to execute. And then you'll have a while right after with the condition that you want met in order to keep executing the while. And we'll also want a semicolon here at the end. So it's a little different from the format above, but the reason to use this one as opposed to a while loop is that this do portion always gets executed at least once, regardless of if the statement is true or false. So in this example, we actually had to set exit equal to false. So this time, let's not set it equal to false and let the user decide right off the bat what to set it to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this above code down here in the do, and I'll erase all of this and just define exit as a bool instead of initializing it as well. We also need to be checking if this is equal to false. So we could have arranged this however we wanted, I'm just using exit double equal to false, meaning if the user keeps telling us they don't want to exit, in my mind, we'll keep executing the statement. Now let's go over to the terminal where we'll compile things and then run. All right, to keep executing, I have to press a zero, so I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that it keeps executing the code if I press zero, and this time if I press one, it quits executing the program. Awesome just like we expected. So just to hit things home, let's write another while loop up above. So we'll put while, and we'll just fill this in by ourselves, and we'll say false this time, and I'll print out something with C out, and just say while loop executed, and I'll put my end line here. Otherwise, I'll do the same exact thing below, and I'll say, let's copy this, paste this down here, and I'll say do while loop executed. So we're looking for one of these two, I'll get rid of this up top and actually just put in a false here as well. So I'm forcing a false in both of these while loops into the do while as well as the while and I just want to see the difference between them. So what I expect is the while loop will never get executed and it will not print out the statement. The do while however will get executed at least once as we mentioned before and then it will exit out of the program. That way you really understand the differences between the two types of loops and why they exist. Let's give this a run. All right, here I go compiling things and then I'll run my program and it says, 
do while loop executed. So just like we thought, the do while is the only one that executed any block of statements. And that should give you the basic understanding of while loops versus do while loops and how to use both a while and a do while. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me and a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.